Good afternoon, good uh, evening or good morning, wherever you are. I'm so glad today to be here today and to show you the, the software and what are the possibilities. Now, uh, I hope that uh, everyone can hear me um, because I cannot see that how many people are joining at this moment. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Amin Zami. Um, I was doing, uh, I was working on this process for like uh, six, seven years. And uh, I was doing my PhD on the automated fiber placement. And back in the day, like uh, six years ago, uh, when I wanted to do the simulation and optimization for that process, uh, I saw a lot of challenges. Uh, I try everything like different software, different packages. But uh, at the end, I decided that uh, it's not working very well or there are a lot of shortcomings. So uh, I decided to develop it myself and uh, it was going well. And in the last few years, uh, with the help of others, it became more and more better. And today uh, I'm gonna show it to you a glance of the software and how this look like and what are the possibilities. Um, so, if you are ready, fasten your seatbelt because we are going to jump into the presentations. You can see the slides, see the screen, and if not, please write it in the comment that uh, if anything wrong or if everything is okay, then I know that uh, what's the situation. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the optical ray tracing and uh, how to do it with the autumn composite software. So it's a very important aspect of the simulations which uh, needed pay attention for the better understanding and industry 4.0 so uh, for those who are not familiar with the uh, this process optical ray tracing autumn composite or automated fiber placement let me give you a short example and short brief
I hope that everybody can hear me. Please write it in the comment if you cannot hear me. I see that some people say that everything is perfect, but some say that uh, they cannot hear my sound. So in case that uh, seems uh, good, I could continue the, the presentations. Uh, can you hear me now? So some people just writing that the sound is gone again. So um, I try to make it uh, very clear that if uh, there is no technical problems. Can you please write it down if the sound is available? Then I can continue for the rest. Yes, great. Uh, I see a positive uh, feedback, so <laughs> it's fine. So, um, so let's back to the example. So the example is about a simple plate. I'm trying to make a geometry and make an optical analysis. So you can use the mouse to uh, to use the rotate this panel, or you can use the arrow button on the keyboard. Uh, you use this uh, slider to define your panel. So this uh, plate basically helps you to define the to define the geometry of the kinematics. So with these buttons, you can rotate this uh, plate. So I'm trying to uh, make the plate somehow that has intersections with this uh, STL file. I'm trying to uh, rotate and move this panel. So you can, uh, yeah. So, so uh, the lines from this area, from the blue lines, goes toward the yellow lines. So uh, I need to rotate a little bit of the panel again, like this. So it gives some line from this side to that side and find the intersections. Here we go, you see the red uh, uh, points, which is the center uh, of the panel and you will see now the <coughs> the roller if i zoom in you see that uh, all of the points here and with this slider you can move this i redo this again and use the little less points you can accept Yes. So what we are going to do, uh, we define the path, which is starting from here and finish here. We need to define the laser angle. So uh, using this put laser and head align target, we define this. So you will see 
uh, if I zoom in, you will see this is the uh, the yellow uh, rectangle, and this is a target. So if I move the target toward the center. My laser is now like that. What I'm going to do is that uh, to bring it more toward the direction of the uh, roller movement. I change the uh, distance of the center. So this uh, green uh, sphere change and I move these locations which is the center of the laser source or heat source. I zoom in a little bit. So what you see here is the laser source toward this point. And you will see all of the orientations of the uh, orientation of the, this line, these red lines, which is arrow. And uh, you could rotate this, this laser head and whenever it is OK, uh, you could move this. And when you see that uh, when I do the movement of this slider, the laser remains stationary. So what I need to do is just click on Adaptive Laser Positions. And then <coughs> all of the geometry will move together. And you will see the two uh, letters like a tilt <clears throat> and yeah, which we use these two uh, directions for defining the variations of the tilt and yaw angle in the next uh, example. Um, I go back to the original positions. I rotate the laser head like that. And uh, yeah, like this. And I set this as a start point. And I move it until here, which is the finish line. Yeah, something like that, finish. So you will see here a start finish. And uh, yeah, then you can save the example, example one, write it as a flat. And what is uh, happening now it's just uh, calculating all of the locations <coughs> of the this uh, uh, laser directions and in the directory of the software if you go here in analyze the UOT this example is made example number one flat and this is the path and if you look at here it would be the file kinematic UOT will be made and uh, now you could perform the optical analysis. Go back to the main window, UOT, <coughs> optical analysis, yes, and click on the file that you just made. Click on OK, done. And now perform of the calculations. And now the analysis is start. You will see the progress here on this window. And at the same time, all of the new files will be generated on this uh, directory. So this is all of the intersection points. <clears throat> and if I open one of the files, uh, you will see this is the intersection point, uh, XYZ location, and energy, which is absorbed to that location. So the new file is created, optical UOT, and these new files. So what the next we should do uh, we should have a look at the results so coming back to the UOT and post-processing and opticals and go back to the file and click on this file yes we are coming back to the post-processing window and we select one steps which is here and you will see the green lines is the rays coming from the number one and if i zoom in you will see all of the rays coming from number one and they have intersection here 
you will see all of the intersection points and the reflection as well. If you like, you can change the transparency here and a little bit rotations. And you will see here the reflection from the panel. So these are the reflection line, the red lines. And this is a normal lines. So now you will see the steady case. So because all through these uh, steps, the, the optical case is remains almost stationary. And uh, you could change the laser, po uh, laser power. Here is 300, for example, if you change it to the uh, 500, you could immediately and then see the differences here on the total absorbed energy. And you could also change the laser intensity. Now here is 000, which is uniform. You can change it to the Gaussian distributions like this. And you will see the differences. So you are probably wondering what is this numbers all about? So if you go to the main window, <clears throat> you will see that how to generate the different uh, laser intensity distributions. You go here. And for uniform, we have this. For Gaussians, we have something like this. And we, if we change these parameters, we can generate a different uh, intensity like that. And now we would like to know that uh, what values, what ID we should add to the, the post-processing. So we could save the data. Now the data is like this, laser ID. You see, 0, 8, 5, 15. And if I click on save and come back to the post-processing, you see 200, 100, the same as the same as this window. You could also change the divergence here, which is I put it like a five degree, you will see the divergence. <clears throat> so uh, we come back to the post-processing window. Okay, we saw this, it's very good. But the next step is that we would like to show to add variable tilt angle during the movement. So imagine that the orientation of the <coughs> laser would change. So what I need to do is that coming back to the, uh, the main window of the UOT kinematic here, and we add this import tilt and yaw variations. So based on the this is on the direction of the tilt and yaw, which is, you will see here, this is the direction of tilt and yaw. We could have some variations of the relative variation of this uh, laser direction. So we click on the import and yaw, tilt and yaw, and we import this file. You could open the file and see what is look like. <clears throat> so basically, this is the relative variation of the tilt and yaw. The first one is tilt, the second one is yaw. So this is the relative variation angle based on a degree. I click on uh, open. And now you will see all of the tilt and yaw is imported here. You could also uh, change every value here as you wish. And then when you are done, just close it. And now we should be able to see the variations. If you start like here, it goes a little bit up. So if you notice the differences, I'm coming back again, back. So it's orientation a little bit changed like that. And you will notice it here. So here is 40. The angle from here to here is this angle. It's 40 degree. And when we are here is 60 degree. Now um, we save this example. We 
we set the start point and uh, set the finish point. And when we are done, we click on save the example one flat number. Uh, we add it as a tilt. Click on OK. Now the kinematic is made. We can check it. If we go back to the Marvel's UO team, and you will see this file is created at this time. Yeah. So what we need to do is coming back and perform optical analysis. We click on the optical UOT analysis, click on on, and we select the file. Now click press to calculate. So the files will be generated here. And when it is done, we can check the result in the post-processing UOT. Yes. We go back here and uh, click on this file. Uh, we select a step and you will see the see the analyzer's output. Like that. Um, maybe you ask, like, uh, what is the intensity look like on this? So for that reason, we need to distribute the optical points toward the control volume. I close it. I come back to the UOT pre thermal and click on on and uh, select the file optical UOT and click on the performing pre thermal. So this function basically uh distributed the points optical rays optical points toward the control volume and generates the uh, heat intensity and uh, flux distributions so coming back again post processing here we go to the thermal and tilt so basically the same window but a little bit different functionality We select one point like that. <clears throat> and if you would like to see the intensity, we click on that and the intensity show up here. So what I'm going to do is performing the animations here. So uh, I click on this button which is creating the animations and waiting until the goes toward the, all of the steps and you will see that uh, when the angle of rays will be a little bit changed a little bit the uh, heat in heat flux would change on the tape and also substrate if you improve a little bit number of rays and discretizations of the control volume the quality of this graph would be better and higher resolution. Now, uh, when it is finished, the file, which is a video animation file, would be, would be generated into the directory. And we can quickly have a look at this. Here we have a look at this file, which is Kinematics Optical. We click on double click and we see the animations. Yeah. So uh, I guess we almost cover everything for this example, which is 
yeah, performing the ray tracing analysis on a flat panel, simple. And uh, now let's go back to the presentation and see what is remaining. Now, until now, we have a look at this example, which is, uh, uh, I would say, is relatively easy. But how about if we have a more curved part? So the next example is about uh, this one, which is the rectangle with different fillets on the edges. <clears throat> and what we would like to see is that uh, what, what's happening at the curved points and what are the intensities. And uh, if we add some divergence to the rays, what does the output look like? So for that purpose, we go back again into the software. We close this window. Uh, the examples that uh, we are planning to do is this example, which has a different fillet on different edges. <coughs> um, so again, we follow the same procedure, uh, importing the CAD file and selecting the file. We add this as a scale. And we are ready to perform our trajectory. We again use this uh, plate to define our path. I change the value, which is the overall dimension of this uh, rectangle. So I little bit play with these um, buttons to make it, sorry, yeah, to make it have intersections with this. <coughs> area, a little bit rotate this, and a little bit moving toward uh, here, make it a little bit smaller, and let's see if we click on add new paths, would be a desired path, yes, okay, yeah. Yeah, so depending on the geometry and the STL file, it's a little bit uh, take some time more, but now uh, you will see the output. Uh, if I zoom in, you will see the roller, and this is a control volume. I change it a little bit more, and if I move it, this roller goes. on this path. Yeah. So it seems good. Now uh, the path is good. Now we need to define the laser directions. <clears throat> we go back again at the start point. We use these uh, points to define our laser directions. We bring the center of target toward on these locations and bring the other points as a heat source here. I use the arrow button on the keyboard to, <clears throat> to make it more uh, better view. Now we have uh, these orientations. I will be rotate this panel, just laser head. A little bit zoom in to make it more toward the center. Yes, seems good. And uh, I click on the adaptive laser positions to move it all together. And now seems everything's fine. Uh, now we could now move it, Ch check that uh, everything is uh, is working as expected. Now everything seems good. Uh, the next step is that uh, to set the finish and uh, start positions. <coughs> 
Now, because I'm streaming at the same time, it's a little bit more slow than normal, but usually it's much, much faster than uh, this one. So uh, we need to set the we need to set the start point. I put it as a, here as a start point. And uh, we finish it here. Yeah, like that. As a finish line, so a step number 69 and the finish a step number 263. So in total, almost 200 steps. And uh, now we can save the path. Example number two. And uh, Let's set a name. So um, these locations, uh, the position, orientation will be calculated based on the 3D transformation matrices. And that's, that's why it takes a little bit of time, especially for curve at the pass. Uh, now uh, it is done. You can go back to the software. Click on the UOT optical analysis and select the file that we just made. Use this one at this time. Click on open. Okay. And just notice that we use a GPU accelerator to make the analysis a little bit faster. And we click on analysis. And you will see the progress here. <clears throat> so it's a little bit taking more time because we have more steps and more complexity. But usually, yeah, I expect that around the minute would be ready. And if you look at the directory, we have uh, We have all of the data which was generated just now. So it is almost done. The next step is to opening the post processing optical to check the result. Um, this example. Click on one steps. So I'm using the shortcut on the keyboard like that. You could also add the axis system um, to the window with the P. Just this one, you will see. It. So um, a little bit change the lightning. So if you go move on this panel, you will see at this the how much tape and mandrel and roller is absorbing the energy. And uh, at this uh, curved location, there would be a small localization of the intensity like this and now the Simulation is performed. If you would like to see the uh, the yeah laser intensity, you could again come back to here and perform the pre-thermal and chooses chooses uh, this file that you just generated for the this fillet and click on the distributing to distributing the optical rays. 
So the, the time that it takes to distribute the arrays, it depends on the number of the arrays and also the control volume. Uh, so the better control volume means that a higher mesh, higher uh, intensity, higher uh, smaller uh, mesh size would be higher quality and of course takes a little bit longer. So when it's done, uh, you could uh, come back to the post-processing and thermo and coming back to this. Now we could see that uh, what are the intensity are look like. If I leave it, make the window smaller, I click on the intensity. And if I move, you will see that the intensity are changing the value and also is, is uh, intensity distributions. And if you uh, use a higher raise or higher, uh, yeah, node numbers, higher control volume, a smaller mesh, this uh, graph would be, have a nicer uh, representations. But for now, just for the representation of the possibility and what you could get is sufficient. Um, the another thing that you could do, um, is just uh, adding the, the laser divergence, which by clicking this, you could either the, remove the divergence or add the divergence to the laser source. <clears throat> so if I look at the time, it's now uh, uh, 15 for uh, five, it's on the European time. Um, I guess that we don't have uh, so much time to go to the next example, which is about the pressure vessel. Um, I think that uh, for today, we are concluded to uh, jump into the question and answer if anyone has uh, any questions or concern how to download the software, how to use it, etc. Uh, I could tell to you that, um, yeah, we have uh, we have uh, availability uh, for a download um, starting after this meeting, and you could use the free trial until the 10th of July. <clears throat> and uh, so, and this is the download. Uh, you could uh, set a download request at the website at this address. And if you like to just check it, have a look at this, try it. Uh, you could try it for free until 10th of July, and um, uh, you could uh, also give a feedback if you have any concern or questions. And um, now I'm ready to answer your question, if any. So you can write your question in the comment section. I will read your comments. I stop sharing the video. And regarding the documentations, um, uh, when you download the software, uh, you could find some documentation inside the software. And uh, there are also some documentation which are not available in the software. You could request it and we could send it to you. And, uh, and for the licensing, um, <coughs> uh, as I mentioned, uh, we could provide a free licensing by uh, until uh, 10 of July. You could use it. Uh, uh, without any limitation until then and uh, afterwards you could see that uh, if, it would be, if it would be helpful for you i try to uh, read your comments um, and 
in case after there is no uh, concern or questions here in a couple of minutes we could conclude this uh, uh, webinar i hope that uh, you could uh, learn something new today or uh, understand something about the uh, optical ray tracing analysis or automated fiber placement or autumn composite software in case of uh, a question coming up you could always welcome to send uh, us email or ask your question through the website with the feedback um, and if there is no uh, such a questions here i slowly try to uh, conclude this uh, webinar and stop this webinar So uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining this webinar. I hope that uh, everything was uh, we could you could hear me because at the beginning it was it seems that uh, some people could not hear me enough. Good. Um, I hope that you didn't miss anything. Um, in case that uh, you need the support, you could always contact uh, Autumn Composite for the for the support of this uh, package and software. Uh, thank you very much and see you maybe in the next webinar. Thank you.